WBUR Podcasts, Boston. So, Tiana, we're pretty much having the same experience right now, right? We're new to Boston. What do you miss the most? <laughs> I miss the food. <laughs> the food so much <laughs> oh my god yeah coming from down south no yeah yeah whether it's like the tex-mex the soul food or just eating my mom's food like the soul food especially like her salt and pepper wings i'm about to cry okay i'm gonna stop <laughs> i feel you i feel you i'm, I'm hungry now <laughs> it gets real with the food i'm telling you i think the thing i miss the most is just just those encounters where you, you run into somebody, maybe you're on a train and maybe you're just out for a walk mm-hmm. and y'all just speak, you know, and just have yeah. a few minutes of an exchange or something like that. Those moments mm-hmm. really mean a lot. And, and I don't know, I find myself, I don't get those too often these days, you know. Me neither, me neither. Yeah. yeah. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. So one morning, I'm up doing my typical routine of looking through the headlines for cool stories, and I came across a piece in the Boston Globe that really caught me. You know, it's about how young Black people in Boston are moving to cities in the South. It's a trend called reverse migration, which is a reference to the Great Migration, that period in American history where masses of Black folks moved north from the South. So I reached out to Tiana Woodard, who is the reporter behind the piece. She's a Report for America fellow covering the area's Black communities for the globe. She's also a recent transplant like me. So we just had to sit down and talk about why so many young Black folks aren't getting what they need here. And it kind of became, you know, this little bonding session of being homesick. So, Tiana... I just moved up here, and you're telling me that all the black people are leaving? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so What's sorry. What's going on here? Break it to what you. gives? <laughs> How did you find out about this story? What got you interested in it? What did you see? Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us. Yeah, so I guess like what got me into it was just personal experience. I graduated from school in Texas in 2021, and I immediately got a job offer at the Globe. So I moved straight from Texas to Boston in 2021. And kind of just as I was going out in the community and introducing myself to people, I would tell them, yeah, like I grew up, I was born and raised in Nashville. I just came here from Texas, though. I live in Texas for about 13 years. And they're like, oh my God, why are you here? Like, I'm trying to leave there. Or people would be Mm. asking me, like, oh my God, I have some family in Houston or Dallas. I've heard about Austin, San Antonio. Like, I'm trying to move there. I know, like, it just seems like it's a lot better for people there. And I would run into that over and over again, whether I was like on the job, going to the doctor's office, talking to my dentist, my hygienist was like thinking of moving. Damn. All these like black folks were just really interested. As soon as I told them I was a Southerner, their ears perked up. And I was just thinking, I feel like there's a story here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So tell me just how many black Bostonians have left the region? Do you have an idea? Yeah, so a little hard to tell just because a lot of the data that we are using or that to track migration is through the census. And we kind of already know right. that over time, Black folks and Black people, they kind of identified different like ways in terms of race and ethnicity over time. So in my story, what I found and using this analysis from this demographer, William Frey, was really good. Mm-hmm. He had said that On average, between like 2015 and 2020, there were about like 2,800 Black people in Massachusetts moving to Southern states. And the most popular ones were Georgia and Florida. And I know that in the 2020 census, like in greater Boston in general, we were talking about how there were a few thousand or so Black people leaving. We don't know whether that was to the suburbs or the outskirts of greater Boston elsewhere. That's at least what we know. We know that there's definitely been some trend of people leaving and really pulled to southern states. Mm. What were some of the reasons you heard? Right. So I know like the big thing, the big thing that everyone talked about was cost of living. I know that everyone, like everyone keeps saying we're in a housing crisis right now. Everyone's feeling the repercussions of that. But it just, I think, manifests in different ways for Black people in Boston. Like I focused on the story on people in their 20s and 30s and... Mm -hmm. 
a lot of them were kind of thinking like wanting to find like another partner and settle down and start a family. And they were just looking at these housing prices. Like I know in my story, I mentioned that the single family medium home price for in greater Boston, it peaked at like 900000 this year. But in Houston, it peaked at like $355,000. So it's just like a third of that. So Mm -hmm. that was a big thing. Another big thing that I heard that was like really interesting was just that people kept saying that they felt that Southern states had a more visible black middle class. Like it was just, it was easier to see black people thriving and hustling. I don't mean this at all as that the black, there are not black middle class folks in Boston, but a lot of people were talking about how they felt like I saw a lot more black business owners, a lot more like people owning real estate, just Mm-hmm. And then I think just another thing, and I think this is something that I've noticed moving up here, is that a lot of people were talking about how they just wanted more, like, nightlife or social spaces that <sighs> were for them. Yeah. Um, just coming up here, it's really hard to find these spaces where you see people that look like you, that relate to you. And that was just something that even, like, people, like, a good chunk of the people I spoke to for the story had devoted so many years of their lives to trying to make these spaces in Boston. Even they were struggling and realized that when they moved to places like Houston or Atlanta, it's just these spaces were in abundance. Mm-hmm. So for the story, I spoke to more than a dozen people, most of them Black natives, not all of them, but asking them to take me through their thought process of what led them to leave Boston and also what their life in their new city has been like. It was just so, like, interesting, I guess, to hear what this process was like for them and what led them to move and also the people that were working so hard to push against the issues that actually made them leave. Mm -hmm. Another, like, interesting thread, I know that we call this, people calling it the reverse Great Migration, but a lot of the people I spoke with for the story, they didn't have roots in the Deep South. Like, some of these people were kind of just doing their own first migration, but they were tied to this, like, I guess, common Black culture, this Black community, this Black um, camaraderie. And that was a moving thread or moving piece that I found throughout all of these people who were trying to plant new roots. You're, you're laying out a lot, and they are <laughs> all resonating. We'll be back with more of my conversation with Tiana after a quick break. Did you kill Marlene Johnson? I think you're one of the first people to have actually asked. From WBUR and ZSP Media, this is Beyond All Repair, a new podcast about an unsolved murder that will leave you questioning everything. Somebody should be in jail for murdering my sister. A woman who's never been believed. As long as they think I have done this, then they're not looking for who actually did this. And that's what makes it a cold case. No, it's a botched case. And a search for the truth, once and for all. Wow, it just gets more interesting. Beyond All Repair. Listen and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Be careful. You're digging in a place that's been very peaceful for a while. Do it anyway. Dig. Okay, we're back. I am curious to know, is there anybody specifically that comes to mind when you think about the experiences that that these folks are having? Well, I would say everyone, but I think like one that just really pops up based on what we've just been talking about. I spoke to Julian, one of the guys in the story. He's lived in Boston all his life and he like created a group called ProFresh, which is like a networking group for young Black professionals of color. But he like ran into like a lack of liquor licenses, finding like actual venues that would have like black events. And he took advantage of his remote job during the pandemic to just get do a test run of living in Houston for a month, booked an Airbnb. And he just like was able to like experience just these like black restaurants and sports grills that were popping at like 1 a.m. Like he got all you can eat wings. And then he stopped at this place called Prospect Park. And it was still, like, going hot on a, like, Wednesday weeknight where people were still coming at 1 or 2 a.m. 
Um, it was just so lively, like hip hop, trap music. He told me like, this is exactly what I was looking for. And he told me like, I'm a thousand percent sure this is going to be my new home. Mm. That was what really stood out to me. This person trying to, working so long, like hard and so long to make spaces in Boston, moving that and found what exactly he was trying to craft. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's wild. What I'm finding interesting is that, you know, when people think of the South, right, you know, we think of red states, you know, white folks who are hostile to black people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did any of that come up in your reporting? Oh, my God. I heard that so, so many times. I think even just coming from the South or Texas and telling that's what I lead with. A lot of people are like, oh, my God, like. Were you okay there? Like, <laughs> yeah. Are you doing okay? Like, are you surviving? Like, my family's been here since like the 1800s. Like, we're okay. But that was even something that the sources I spoke with had to interrogate or grapple with. So I met um, this girl. Her name is Eva, and she grew up in West Roxbury, which is kind of interesting, just given like I think a lot of times when we think of West Roxbury, we think that. It's predominantly white, but she grew up never really thinking that it was that way, just growing up with her, like, church communities of, like, Haitian folks and other Black folks, like, in the Seventh Adventist Church. And we were talking, and I was just like, did you ever see yourself moving to the, like, South? And she was like, I don't know. I always thought of myself as a city girl. Like, people were always, like, telling me to, you should come join me in Charlotte or what's that. But she was just like, I'd always seen on social media just, like, what's happening to Black people, this, like, voter suppression, so many, like, instances of racism where it's just, that's kind of what was dominating her, I guess, narrative of what the South was like. And so she had, like, a lot of hesitancy to move until just the pandemic really kind of allowed her to really make that step forward. But she had noticed that, I guess, like, once she moved, that there was so much more to the South than that. And that, especially something I also heard from everyone is that, like, Racism is everywhere. It just wears different faces. It has different hats. Like, Amen. Amen. It manifests different ways in the South. Like, it's not good anywhere, but unfortunately, Black people have to encounter racism, whether it's in Boston, whether it's in Houston, where she is. So mm-hmm. that's just something we navigate on a day-to-day basis, and she just has to encounter it in different ways. So she's, like, ended up loving it and just delving into the Southern culture and just seeing how much more there is to it. Though I will, like, say, I like, kind of notice this throughout, like, all of my interviews is that a lot of the people that are moving, they're moving to, like, these metropolitan areas, like Houston or Blue Pockets, like Atlanta. But yeah. when I ask them, like, have you traveled out to, like, the suburbs or, like, the country parts? They're like, oh, no, I won't touch that. So. And you know what? I do the same thing up here. I mean, I- <laughs> I mean, I did that, too. I mean, that was kind of something I was always taught. Like, you can only be in some sorts of town. Like, yep. so, there are still some yep. downtowns. That is still true. So, Well, Tiana, thank you for coming through. I have one more question for you. You just moved up here last mm-hmm. year, and you said you've, you're kind of getting settled. You found your community a bit, right? right? You know, for young Black folks who are moving into the area, who want to give Boston a chance, what advice would you give them to help them get settled? No, that's a really good, good question. And I feel like even though I moved a year ago, I feel like getting settled here and moving to a new space just as like a young person, a new like adult just grappling with everything. It's still like a something I'm learning day to day. I think that it really comes down to you really have to put yourself out there. I would say go to as many events as you can. Go to as many Black spaces as you can. Just try and meet people. And I think that once you meet that person who I feel like, whether they've been here for a really long time, whether they're a native or not, like, I've always noticed that I know that even though Boston has a stereotype for being cold, I haven't encountered, like, one, like, Boston person who's not willing to help me or willing to help guide me or always inviting me to things. It really just, I think, takes that initial, like, spark. It is hard. I think it's not just hard in Boston, but it is hard for anyone to meet people or to make space or to feel at home in like a new city. But I think that Black people in Boston, one thing that's really stood out to me is that they're really, really proud and they're really protective of their community, but they're always happy to help out new people. And so don't be afraid of that. Like these people love their home deeply and they're always... at least from what I've seen, they're willing to help people out or make them feel at home or consider this is our new home too. Tiana, listen, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
That's Boston Globe reporter Tiana Woodard. And that's our show for today. If you want to hear more from us at The Common, hit us up on Twitter at WBUR The Common or email us at thecommon at WBUR.org. We're always looking for your ideas and your feedback. Also, if you're enjoying the show, drop us some stars, give us a review, let us know how you're feeling. We'd really appreciate that. For now, I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.